how do you know when your painting is finished? I've been asked that many times over the years. In this video, I hope to shed some light on the subject and I'll use this painting to demonstrate. Leonardo da Vinci said, art is never finished, only abandoned. I think he may have been referring to the idea that art is subjective and that the interpretation of art can vary from person to person. Many artists strive for perfection in their paintings, but eventually they reach a point where they decide to stop working and consider their painting complete, even though they might still see potential for further refinement. So how do you get to that point? How do you know when your painting is finished? I think the first thing you have to do before you even start a painting is to clarify your objective. By that I mean, what is the purpose of your painting? What message do you want to convey? If you can understand what that is, then that will guide you as you paint. With this painting, I was inspired by the koi that swim around in a pond at a nursery that we like to go to. I wanted to show the cool, clear water and the contrast between the long cylindrical shapes of the fish against the rounded shapes of the rocks. I wanted to show the reflections on the water that caught my eye and I wanted the painting to remind me of summer. So before you start painting, ask yourself why you want to create this particular painting. Is it for personal expression? Do you want to evoke emotions? Do you want to tell a story? Or do you just want to capture the beauty of your subject? Understanding your purpose for creating the painting will help you stay focused throughout the painting process. You'll be able to align your artistic choices such as your colour palette, your composition and your techniques with the message that you want to convey. It will help you to establish a roadmap for your painting and then you'll be more inclined to be aware of when you have reached your destination with the painting. Once you have worked out the purpose of the painting, then you begin to paint. After a while, you need to stand back and assess what you've done. When I say stand back, I mean put some distance between yourself and the painting. When you're up close, it's easy to become absorbed in the details and you'll lose sight of the overall balance and arrangement of the elements. Stepping back allows you to see it from a new perspective and you can see if you need to adjust anything more easily. I'll often take a photo of my painting about halfway through and I'll look at the photo on my computer. That allows me to look at it with fresh eyes. I can see if there are any major problems by doing that. I'll also do that when I'm nearing the end of the painting. Often I can see things on the photo that I have on the computer that I miss when I'm looking directly at the painting. Some artists hold their painting up in front of a mirror and that allows them to see it with fresh eyes. You'll need to look at the overall balance and arrangement of the elements. Is there a clear focal point? Does the composition lead the viewer's eye through the painting? Make adjustments if needed to enhance the effectiveness of your painting. As you progress, consider the level of detail in your painting. Are there areas that require more attention? Too much detail in every corner can be overwhelming. That's something that I was thinking about when I painted this painting. I wanted it to be detailed, but I didn't want it to be overwhelming. So I pulled back on the detail on the rocks. I drew a lot of the rocks without looking at the reference photo. And while I was painting them, I didn't really look at the reference photo because I knew that it would pull me in and confuse me. As your painting progresses, step back and evaluate how the colours interact with each other. Are they harmonious? Adjustments in colour choices or value contrasts can help to enhance the overall impact of the painting. With this particular painting, I painted in the yellow parts of the main koi that's near my brush at the moment, just the way I saw it on the reference photo. But as I was getting towards the end of the painting, I stood back and looked at it and it felt like something was lacking. So I'll show you what I did to fix that a little later. 
one thing I do with the photo that I take towards the end of the painting is I put it on the computer and I turn it black and white. That allows me to see if I've got enough contrast where I should have it. After doing that, sometimes I might go back to the painting and darken areas around my focal point. It might also involve lifting some paint in the areas where I may have gone too dark. On some of the reflections on the water, I had them a bit dark in places. I couldn't see the rocks beneath the dark areas. So I used my eradicator brush in a few of those areas and I took a small amount of paint off. When I'm nearing the end of the painting and I can't really see much more that I have to do, that's when I know it's time to take a break. I put it away for a few days. With this painting, I finished working on it on a Saturday. I thought I was finished. I took it into the house with me and I propped it up near my desk inside. I glanced at it from time to time. I left it for a day or two and then I brought it back down to the studio with me. And having that break allowed me to see that I needed to correct the shape of a few rocks. They weren't quite right and my eye kept going to them. I also painted on a few more soft reflections here and there on the water. Then I took a final photo of it and I looked at it on my computer again. And I was happy with it. I knew that I had to trust myself and I realised that I was done. Having said all that, with watercolour painting, it's easy to overwork them. Usually when a painting has failed, it's because you've gone back in to try and fix things that you think aren't right. A watercolour painting is not always going to look exactly as you had imagined it. You have to learn to leave room for suggested or understated areas. Try not to be tempted to go back in and fix things. This is where it comes back to my first point. Know what the purpose of your painting is. Allow some room for the viewer to interpret it as they see fit. Try not to overstate things. And I know that's easier said than done. Here's where I mentioned I was nearing the end of the painting and I stood back and looked at it. What I noticed was that the red and orange koi at the top of the painting caught my attention, but the large koi at the bottom looked a bit lost to my eye. So I went back and I had a look at some of my other reference photos and I found one with some orange markings on it. So then I got out my orange paint again and I added some orange markings on this one. It's always a good idea if you use a colour in one area of your painting, repeat it somewhere else to create a sense of balance. Here's my finished painting. This one was a bit of an experiment because I've not painted anything like this before. I could have left a few more understated areas, I can see that. I plan on painting some more like this, so in future paintings I'll try to leave some areas where I suggest some of the rocks rather than paint them all in. So I think it's best with watercolour paintings to stop too early rather than too late. When you think you're finished, leave it for a few days and then come back to it with fresh eyes. Get someone who you trust to look at it. I showed Dom those cow paintings I did a few weeks ago and he didn't like them either. He liked the cow vignette that I did the best. I trusted him and I was thinking that anyway. I hope this was useful to you. Prints of this painting are for sale on my website and the original is for sale as well. Thanks for watching. Please give the video a like and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next week. This is how do you know, how do you know when your fin painting is finished? I showed Dom those cow paintings I did a few weeks ago and he didn't like them either. He didn't like them either. You didn't like them either, did you, honey? No, I didn't like them either. Sorry, Carl. I showed Dom those cow paintings that I did a few weeks ago and he didn't like them either. He did it again. <laughs> okay, we get it. We get it. We will. Okay, there's the burp. <laughs>